practice Uttanasana with a block. So place your block between your upper inner thighs. Have your feet parallel about sitting bones distance apart. Bring your hands to your hips. Lengthen your trunk, shoulders back. Inhale to look up slightly and then exhale and fold forward, hinging at the hips. Squeeze the block with the outer thighs so your legs are awake and alive and lifting. Outer thighs are squeezing in and release and, your, and relax your trunk. Fingertips down on the floor near the toes. And focus on gathering the outer body to the inner. Outer hips gather in. Outer thighs gather in towards the block. Draw up through the fronts and backs of your legs and elongate your trunk downwards. Breathing here. The abdomen is long and receding back towards the spine. And then take your hands to your hips, reach your chest forward, shoulders back, and come all the way up out of the pose. Now we'll practice Utkatasana, feet together. Hook your thumbs and lift your hands and arms up. And then bend your knees and sit your hips all the way back as if you're sitting back and down into a chair. And squeeze your outer hips together, squeeze your outer knees together, stay grounded through the inner feet, and reach the arms up. Reach your fingernails back and your shoulder blades snuggle into the rib cage. And focus on the outer hips dropping down and squeezing together. Let the whole rib cage lift up out of the belly, sink down a little deeper, and then inhale and come all the way up. And exhale and release your arms down. And now bring your sticky mat to the wall for a variation of Parshvottanasana. And step your left foot forward and right foot back. Hips are square. Feet are hips distance apart. And then lift your arms and lengthen your waist up through the arms, through the fingertips. So there's a big lift of the low belly and a lift of the rib cage up. Continue to square your hips. The back foot is at a 45 degree angle. Lift up through the musculature of the legs and then hinge forward at the hips to bring your fingertips to the wall. And walk your fingertips up the wall to get longer. Pull your hips back. Engage the musculature of the legs so that the muscles of the legs lift up from ankles to knees to hips. Think of the outer left hip pulling back and think of squeezing the outer hips towards each other. And let your head release down. And then push your fingertips off the wall to come all the way up to center. Exhale your arms out to the sides and down. Hands to hips. And then come to the other side, taking the right foot forward and left foot back. Back foot is at a 45 degree angle. Hips are square. Musculature of the legs are engaged. And lift the arms all the way up, lengthening the waist up. Lift the rib cage three dimensionally up off of the abdomen, off of the lower back. Extended arms, open hands. Draw the muscles of the legs up from ankles to knees to hips. And then hinge at the hips to take the fingertips to the wall and walk those fingertips up the wall as you pull your pelvis back. Extended arms and legs here. Long in the trunk, long spine. Let your head release down and think of pinning your outer hips, gathering them in towards the midline. Pull that outer right hip back even more. Stay very active in your legs here. 
and then push off the wall to come back to center, lengthening the arms. And exhale, release the arms out to the sides and down, hands to hips, and step your feet together. Now we'll practice warrior one with the back heel on the wall. So set up as you see here, the right foot forward and the left heel on the wall, square hips, feet about hips width apart, hands on hips, lengthening the waist, lift your arms up overhead, lift the low belly to lift from underneath the heart, to lift from under the collarbones, keep lengthening up through the arms and then bend the right knee so the knee comes directly over your right heel and press your left heel into the wall. And see if you can square the hips. Pull your right femur back to pull the outer right hip back. And let the left hip come forward so that you find yourself more square. But keep your back thigh engaged so that your back leg is very straight. And bend the front knee forward and then lift the low belly to lift the rib cage, to lift the arms, spread the hands. Make more space between your thumbs and your back heel. Pull the outer right hip back and towards the midline. And then inhale and straighten your front leg. And exhale, push your back foot off the wall to change sides. And now bring the left foot forward and step your right heel back onto the wall. Make sure that your feet are hip width apart. And then square your hips, left hip back, right hip forward. And then lengthen the sides of your waist up. Let your shoulders go back. Lift the whole rib cage. And then stretch your arms up, pulling the thumbs back, stretching the pinky fingers up. And keep pressing your back heel into the wall as you bend your front knee deeply. And then square the hips again, pulling the left femur back. Lift the low belly. And then lift your rib cage three dimensionally upwards. See if you can find a deep internal ascension through the front of the spine. And continue that lift up through the armpits and through the extended arms, strong and straight in the back leg. Back heel presses into the wall, front knee reaches forward. And then inhale and straighten the front leg and exhale your arms out to the sides and down, hands to hips, and step your feet together to recover. And now we'll do a version of gate pose at the wall. So place your sticky mat against the wall as you see here, and then spread your blanket out on the mat near the wall and sit on your shins. And then lift your left arm up and place the whole left side of your body very close to the wall, standing up on the knees. And place your right foot down on your sticky mat so that your right foot is even in front of the line of the left knee. So that right leg is a little bit in front of you. And then start to side bend away from the wall. Press your left hip into the wall and then lengthen the whole side body up and over to the right. Press the right foot down. Press the right elbow into the right inner knee to keep that knee open. And stand up tall on your left shin. So don't let the buttocks go back and down, but rather pull the buttocks forward and under you. Lengthen your spine and then side bend more to the right. Lift the buttocks up and under you, press the left hip into the wall, and then inhale, get taller and come out of the pose. And then stretch your right leg out for a second variation. Make sure that your heel is a little bit in front of you. And then start to side bend towards the right foot. Again, keeping the buttocks reaching forward and under you, standing tall on the left shin stretching the left side body up and over, right hand resting on right shin, parigasana, like the latch of a gate, 
Take your body up and over to the right. Open the left ribs to the ceiling. Let the abdomen recede and lengthen. And then inhale and come all the way up, letting your left arm come up against the wall. And then move away from the wall as you lower onto your shins and take a rest. And then spin around for the other side. Stand up on your right shin and press your right foot down. Make sure your left foot is a little bit in front of you and the left knee is open. So the right arm is going up the wall and then connect your right outer hip to the wall and start to side bend over to the left. So that left elbow is pressing back into the left inner knee to keep that knee open. Scoop the buttocks forward, lift the front of the pelvis up, lift the low belly, lengthen your spine, get longer and then go more to the side. Anchor your right hip to the wall. Anchor your left elbow to the left inner knee and then open the right ribs and go more over to the side. Scoop the buttocks forward. Stand tall on the right shin. Lengthen and go deeper. Open the right ribs to the ceiling. Lift the low belly. Press the left foot into the floor. And then inhale and come up, walking the right arm up the wall. And start to straighten the left leg, flexing the foot. Foot is very alive. Scoop the buttocks forward so it's really under you and then start to side bend left. So make sure it's not a back bend, but rather it's a true side bend. So let that left buttock drop down and under you. Scoop the tailbone forward. Lengthen the trunk and go to the side. Left hand on left shin. Right hip pressing into the wall. Open the right ribs, long arms, long spine, scooping the buttocks under you, standing tall in the right shin, deepen your breath here, and then inhale and come up, right arm against the wall, and scoochie yourself away from the wall, sit on shins and recover. Now we'll do a quad stretch with the wall and you need a blanket and two blocks as well. Please fold up the blanket as you see here and place that folded blanket on the sticky mat and against the wall. And then sit on your shins directly in front of that blanket with your back pointing towards the wall. And then have the blocks underneath your hands alongside your body and inch yourself back so that your feet are up on the blanket and your knees are still on the mat. And then as you see here, place your left shin against the wall so the left knee is on the blanket and the top of your foot is pressing against the wall and then lean into the blocks with your hands so that you can place your right foot between the blocks so that front leg is in a front leg lunge position and start to pull the whole sacrum forward towards the front heel and kick the top of your back foot into the wall make your hips square pull the outer right hip back and in think of squeezing your hips from the outer to the inner gather your hips towards each other and lift your low belly up off of the pelvis and as you lunge here think of the front of the pelvis lifting think of the kidney area the back of your rib cage the lower back ribs lifting and spreading bend the front knee square the hips gather the hips lift the low belly let the tailbone moon move in Lift the frontal hips, lengthen the spine. And then move the blocks forward a little bit. 
Bring your front shin down and then bring your back shin down and we'll switch sides. Now bring the right knee onto the blanket. Lean into the blocks and step your left foot between the blocks and kick the top of your back foot into the wall. Pull the outer left hip back and in. Squeeze your outer hips together and lift the low belly. Lift the front of the pelvis. Lengthen all the way through the spine, through the top of the head. Spread the back bottom rib area. Lift the front of the pelvis again and then sink the tailbone forward and in, deeper into your body, bending that front knee. Enjoy having those blocks to support the hands and the arms, to support your upper body. Again, gather those hips together, square and gather the hips. Low belly lifting, front of the pelvis lifting, Sink deeper into the lunge. And then come out of the pose, bringing the front shin down and then the back shin down. Hands on thighs. Breathe here to recover. Now lay down on your belly for Shalavasana and one at a time reach your legs back so that you set yourself up very long on the floor. Take your hands by your hips, forehead down, and then start to lift the shoulders up towards the ceiling. Lift your legs, lift the wrists, reach your chest forward, reach your legs back, and pull the arms back as you stretch your spine forwards. Anchor your tailbone down. Lift the inner thighs, stretch the knees, open the toes, and lift those outer arms up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, release down, resting your head to one side. And then turn your head and rest the other cheek down on the ground. Release and relax the buttocks. And now for another version of Shalabhasana. So be on your belly, stretched out long. Lengthen your rib cage forward, lengthen your legs back, and then stretch your arms forwards. And once again, adjust your legs so that your legs are really reaching back and so the arms are reaching forward. So you should feel nice and long here, laid out on the ground, prone position, belly down. And now start to lift your right arm and left leg up. So stay grounded in that right leg, stay grounded in the left hand. Lift the chest up as well and get longer in that right arm and longer in that left leg. And then slowly lower down and switch sides. Now lifting the left arm up and the right leg up. Stay grounded in that right hand, stay grounded in the left leg and left top of foot, lifting the chest, lengthening the limbs here. And then exhale and release down. And again, lifting the right arm and the left leg. Anchor your tailbone down towards the sticky mat. Lengthen the right arm forward and the left leg back. Extended elbow, extended knee. And lower down. And again, lift the left arm and the right leg up. Reach the left arm forward and the right leg back. Lengthen the limbs. And exhale and come down. And now place your hands alongside your body, alongside the rib cage. Lengthen your legs back again for a Shalabhasana variation. 
Now interlace your fingers behind your back. Lift the arms, pull them back. Lift the legs, pull them back. Open the backs of the knees. Pull the arms and the legs back so much that your spine responds by lengthening forwards. Lift from underneath the collarbones. And get longer here rather than just lifting everything up. So even back down out of the pose 10% and get longer. And then exhale and release down. And switch the interlace of the fingers, taking the other pointer finger on top. And then lift yourself up into Shalabhasana, getting longer as you lift the inner thighs. Keep the feet and toes open. Lift the outer shoulders and pull the elbows and the wrists and the fingers back as you stretch the anterior spine forwards, tailbone anchoring. And then exhale and come down to rest. Now grab a blanket and spread it out on your sticky mat as you see here and lay down so that your frontal hips have some padding. So lay down onto the blanket, belly down, lengthen your legs back and then bend your knees and grab onto your ankles for Dhanurasana, bow pose. And start to lift the thighs up, keep your knees magnetized towards each other. Kick your ankles back into your hands and then lift the ankles up. You can literally lift the ankles up with your hands and also use your legs to lift the shins and heels up towards the ceiling. Let the outer shoulders lift up. Breathing here. And then exhale and release down. Now we'll do another version of Dhanurasana with a slightly different way of activating in the pose. Lengthen your thighs back to prepare and then bend your knees and grab onto your ankles. And this time, instead of lifting the thighs, think of grounding the knees down towards the sticky mat, grounding the thighs firmly and kick your feet back. Kick your feet back to lift the collarbones up. Lift the arms up. Kick those feet back and squeeze the outer knees and outer thighs in towards the midline. And then exhale and release down. Now grab a bolster and a blanket and we'll practice camel pose. So place your blanket down on the sticky mat so that your shins have some padding. And stand on your shins on the blanket and then place the bolster right on top of your heels. And then you can go ahead and sit down on the bolster. Pull your sitting flesh back so that you can sit up nice and tall. And be here in neutral just for a moment. And then press your fingertips down onto the bolster, leaning back onto your hands and start to lift your pelvis up and forward to come into camel. Lift your shoulder blades up towards the front of the rib cage as you lift the sternum up and back and come into the back bend here and finally releasing the head back. Think of the outer thighs squeezing in, tailbone anchoring forwards, inner thighs reaching back a little bit, pelvis moving forward and reach the shoulder blades up towards the ceiling for support. Press into the fingertips and then come out of the pose by lifting the chest up and then sit back down on the bolster. And now have your sticky mat at the wall and two blocks handy for a variation of Urdhva Dhanurasana. So place your blocks at the wall on an incline, as you see here. Make the blocks about shoulder distance apart and then lay down on your back with the top of your head very close to the wall and your head right between the blocks. Knees bent and feet flat. 
and then place your hands on the blocks as you would prepare for Urdhva Dhanurasana, fingertips pointing towards your shoulders, and then anchor your elbows towards the shoulder sockets. Feet are parallel, and press your feet into the floor, press your hands into the blocks, and lift the tailbone, the pelvis, the buttocks all the way up and start to straighten the arms. Be even in your weight between legs and arms. So push a little towards the leg side and a little towards the arm side. Lift up the heels and lift the buttocks and the tailbone more. And then let the heels ground down as you lift the tailbone even deeper into the body, stretching through the arms. And then tuck your chin towards your chest as you come all the way down. And rest. Now we'll practice downward facing dog with hands on blocks. So bring your blocks right up against the wall at about shoulder width apart. And start on your hands and knees, heels of the hands coming right over the edge of the blocks. And start to lift your buttocks way up and back, lift the heels to make your legs taller. And pull the inner thighs and the outer hips up and back. Pull the back surface of the sacrum up and back away from the lower spine. Pull the rib cage up and back towards the pelvis away from the push of the hands which are pushing into the blocks. Let the head release down. Let your center thighs pull back. Let your inner heels pull back. Lengthen through the armpits and the waist. And again, focus on those outer hips pulling back and squeezing towards each other. Also, the inner thighs and groins reaching back strongly as well. Thigh bones pulling back. Thighs internally rotating. Elbows extended. Head releasing. Fingers spreading. Breathing here. And then bend your knees to come down and rest. Have two folded blankets now for a wonderful open twist Marichyasana variation. So stack your blankets and sit on the edge of your blankets as you see here. And set yourself up so that you're really sitting on the front edge of the sitting bones. Extend your left leg forward and bring your right foot to the outside of your right sitting bone so that you're right leg is basically in a squat and then bring the right elbow to the inner right knee and take a twist to the left and now reach your right elbow down reach your right shin bone down reach the left thigh bone down and go up with the inner trunk ascend the spine from bottom to top and twist to the left as you press your right elbow into the right inner knee so press that right arm into the knee to help you turn the rib cage to the left. And now you'll reach forward with the right arm and grab onto the outer left foot using the left hand near the outer left shin to help support you and take a forward bend here. Let the rib cage flow forward towards the left foot. And then release yourself out of this forward bend. And get ready to switch sides. So extend your right leg forward and bend your left knee deeply so that your left heel is just outside the left sitting bone, a little wider than the sitting bone. And then take the left elbow into the left inner knee and a twist to the right. So your right hand comes onto the blankets behind you. 
Go down with the left elbow as you go up with the left ribs. Go down with the right thigh bone as you lift the low belly. Go down with the left shin bone as you lift the spine from bottom to top and then press your elbow into the left inner knee and turn to the right. Turn the belly and the rib cage. Breathing here as you deepen the twist. And then come out of the twist and elongate the left arm forward to grab the outer right foot. Use the right hand on the floor outside your right shin to support you and take a forward bend here. Let the left ribs and the right ribs flow forward. And then come on up out of the pose. Now we'll practice a wide variation of Marichyasana. So sit on the edge of your two folded stacked blankets and stretch your left leg out to the side like Upavishta Konasana and keep your right heel very close to your right sitting bone and clasp your hands around your right knee, the knee that's close to your chest and then lean your right hand back into the blanket, lift your left arm up, start to twist the belly to the right to get your belly on the other side of that thigh, and then hook the left elbow to the outside of your right thigh, turning to the right. Open the right shoulder, stay extended and active in the left leg, go down with the left elbow to go up with the left ribs, and then turn your belly and rib cage more to the right, as you stretch the left leg to the left. Soft receding belly turns to the right. And then release back to the center. Bend your left knee to bring your left leg in and stretch your right leg out to the side like Upavishta Konasana. The left heel is very close to the left sitting bone and lean back onto your left hand Reach the right arm up and start to lean back to help you twist the belly over to the left and then hook the right elbow, the right arm, to the outside of the left thigh. Press the right elbow down as you lift the right ribs up and turn the rib cage to the left, open the left shoulder. Slide and turn the belly to the left. Keep extending the right leg to the right. Twisting the torso to the left as the right leg stays active, using that outer right arm to help you. And then come back to center. Now we'll do a wonderful twist that I call the grab big toes twist. So be on your back with your arms extended out to the sides and then bend your knees and let your knees fall over to the right. Grab onto your big toes and extend your legs so that you're at a very acute angle here. So you're grabbing onto those big toes. Legs are extending as much as possible. And this is a very deep twist. Now let your belly turn to the left and extend your left arm to the left. See how much you can open your rib cage to face towards the ceiling. So the front ribs face towards the ceiling and enjoy the depth and the churning of this twist here. So be long through the wingspan, be extended in the legs, but allow a deep relaxation to come over you in this pose. There is some passivity, some receptivity that's important in this pose. And then release and come to center and get ready for the other side, letting the knees fall over to the left. Grab your big toes. Be in a very acute angle twist here and extend your right arm to the right. Slide the belly to the right. Open the right ribs to the right. 
Be wide through the collarbones and the arms, extended through the inner legs. And deeply relax and release here. And slowly start to come out of the pose now. Knees bent and feet flat on the floor. And take a breath here in a neutral position. Now we'll practice Paschimottanasana. Start in Dandasana. Stretch your legs out in front of you in a seated position. And pull the flesh of your buttocks back so that you can sit on the front half of your sitting bones. And then ground your hands or fingertips down by your sides and create a deep ascension up through the central axis of the body. Release and open the soft palate, open chest, and then start to hinge forward at the hips and grab your feet in any way that feels comfortable to you. Let the elbows be lifted, let the sides of your body be long, and let the front of your trunk stay long as well. So pull the front ribs forward as much as you pull the back ribs forward towards your toes. Don't get contracted here in your belly at all. So stay long in your abdomen. Stay active in your legs. Get grounded down through the thighs. Inner thighs grounding down. Groins deepening into your body and back to help you fold even deeper. And see if you can lift up a little bit and take a breath to help you pull the front ribs even further forward. Breathing here. And now we'll do a supported version of Setu Bandhasana with two blocks. So have your blocks nearby, lay down on your back, knees bent and feet flat and take your feet quite close to your sitting bones. And now grab onto your blocks, have one block on each side of you, near your hips. Press your feet down, press your arms down, lift your buttocks up, and bring the blocks next to each other, directly beside each other, underneath your sacrum. So your sacrum, your buttocks, will rest on the blocks. Make sure the blocks aren't too high or too low. So find a place where your sacrum and buttocks are supported, nicely supported on the blocks. Interlace your fingers, walk your shoulders under you, lift the shoulder blades into the rib cage towards the chest for a nice open chest. And you can keep your fingers interlaced here or you can Relax your arms in any position that feels good to you. Breathing here. And let your buttocks, sacrum, relax into the support of the blocks. Wide feet are grounded. Relaxed throat, relaxed eyes. Smooth, steady breath here. Enjoy the grounding of the bottom sacrum into the body. So let the support under your pelvis here help the tailbone have a feeling of deepening into the body. Smooth inhalation and smooth exhalation. And then lift the heels, lift the pelvis up, lift the buttocks off the blocks, take the blocks away, and then roll yourself down. 
Now we'll practice happy baby pose. So be on your back with knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Neutral pelvis, neutral spine. Take a breath here. And then bring your knees into your chest with nice wide knees. So the knees are wider than the rib cage. And then take your arms out to the sides and up and grab onto the outer edges of the feet as you see here. And you can play a little bit in this pose pulling the right knee down a little bit towards the right armpit and then pulling the left knee down towards the left armpit. You can play with changing the tilt of your pelvis. Make sure that you keep your knees at an angle of about 90 degrees. Don't let your knees close up. So the heels should kick away from the sitting bones. And enjoy this deep fold in the hip creases. Let the lower back relax and release here. Pull those outer feet down and stretch the inner feet up towards the ceiling. Nice long spine, open breath. And then release and let your feet come down to the floor one leg at a time. Stretch your arms overhead along the floor. Get long in your trunk and then release your legs down one at a time so that you're all stretched out here. Straight arms and straight legs, parallel arms and legs. Roll your thighs in, lengthen the inner feet forward. And once again, come to rest. Now we'll practice Supta Virasana. So open up your blanket onto the sticky mat as you see here. This way your shins and knees will have some padding. And then set up your bolster vertically. And place a folded blanket onto your bolster. This will be a pillow for your head. And then turn around so you're on hands and knees with the bolster behind you. Take the top of your head to the floor and put your fingers onto your calves, onto the upper calves, and pull your upper calves out to the sides and lengthen the calves down towards the heels so that you can sit your pelvis and thigh bones down between the shins and between the feet. And those calves are out of the way. And then start to lean back onto the bolster. And as you do that, let the buttocks reach towards the backs of the knees. And let the bolster support you under your rib cage. So the bolster is not under the lumbar. You're just free under the lumbar so the lumbar can settle down. Lay back and set up the blanket to be supportive for your neck and head. And then stretch your arms out to the sides. Shoulder blades slide down the back slightly. Be grounded in the thigh bones and the knees. And deepen your breath here as you restore. Smooth breathing here, slowing down the exhalations. Have a feeling of release in the groins and the inner thighs. And create a gentle lengthening of the spine from bottom to top. Stay present here. Long, spacious trunk, grounded legs. Relaxed and heavy in the pelvis. And then slowly start to come up using your hands to support you. Come onto hands and knees and then stretch one leg back like a little lunge position just to open up the back of the knee and then stretch the other leg back to open the back of that knee. Now we'll practice legs up the wall pose. Have a blanket nearby, that will be for your head. 
and sit down so that you're very close to the wall, so that one side of your body is very close to the wall. And scoochy your butt even closer to the wall as you lay your spine down and reach your legs up the wall. So the buttocks is very close to the wall here and the backs of your legs are resting on the wall, heels resting on the wall. And then adjust the blanket so that the blanket is supporting your head. And relax and release here. Shoulder blades settling down the back. For a moment you can keep your toes active. Be very present here, deepening the breath a little bit, smoothing it out.